Now let us look at the next problem which is about the majority element. Now let us first read out the problem and then try to see what can be the solution we can find out for this problem. The question says write a function which takes an array and prints the majority element if it exists otherwise prints no majority element exists inside the array. And they are giving the definition of the majority element it says a majority element in an array a of size n is an element that appears more than n by two times hence there is at most one such element can be present inside the array but not more than one element. What do I mean to say by this? Now let us say we have an array like this. This is representing an array which is having some values inside it. So the values are 4, 2, 1, 4, 3, 3, 6, 4, 4, 4. So the total index locations are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So there are total 9 index locations in this. So from 0 to 9 that means the total of uh, you know total of uh, 10 index locations. 10 index locations. Okay. Now let us take one more array for example purposes. The second array is like this which is 4, 2, 1, 4, 4, 3, 6, 4, 4, 4. So again, what are the total number of index locations here? The total number of index locations are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. Again, there are a total of 10 index locations. Now, what is this majority element? The definition says a majority element is the element which appears more than n by 2 times. Element, it says element which appears appears more than n by 2 times n by 2 times so here in the first case does there exist a majority element now I'm not writing an algorithm here just just to explain you what is a majority element I'm just counting what is the number of times an element is appearing so in the first case in this array the we have a number 4 which is appearing 1 2 3 4 and 5 it is appearing 5 times we have a number 2 which is appearing only one time. We have a number 1 which is appearing only one time. We have a number 3 which is appearing two times and we have a number 6 which is appearing only one time. Now does there exist a majority element here? No. No. No majority element. Why? Because even though 4 is appearing 5 times but it is not appearing more than n by 2 times. So for element to be a majority element at least it should appear more than five times which should be six if four exists six times then it can be a majority element the second case how many times four is appearing it is one two three four five and six so it is appearing six times where the total numbers are ten therefore it is appearing more than ten by two times which is six therefore here four is the majority element four is the majority element four is the majority element Okay, now solving this problem is very easy. I know you can easily write a program. Even any new programmer, he can easily write a program. But the problem or the question here is not about just writing a program. The problem is write, write an efficient program. Write an efficient program. Now can you solve this problem? I'm just for spoiler alert. I mean just for uh, purposes. You have to solve this problem in order of n time. Can you solve this problem in order of n time? Which is again very efficient. Okay. Now to solve this problem there may be many problems which exist. There may be different kinds of solution which exist which you may feel that it is very very easy. Now we'll take all those possible solutions here and we'll try to find a majority element in those solutions and then again we are going to find out which of the following solutions that we have done is the most efficient one. So the very first method, what does this very first method says? So the first method says that uh, we have two loops which keep track of the maximum count of all different elements. 
If the maximum count becomes greater than n by 2, then break the loop and return the element having the maximum count. If maximum count does not exist more than n by 2 times, the maturity element does not exist at all. Now, how do you find a solution like this? I mean, how does this first method applies? Assuming that this is an array which is having the elements 4, 2, 1, 3, 3, 3, 3, 1, 2, 3, 6, 3, 3. Now, what is the total number of elements here? Just I'm just making sure that there exists a majority element. So it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So there are a total of 12 elements. So how many times 3 is appearing? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So at least it should appear one more time. Okay, let us say this is also 3. Okay, for example, purposes. so 3 is appearing more than one time. So it is more than by two times. So therefore, 3 is a majority element. Now how this entire approach here, how it is implementing. For this, we are going to take a loop A and I and we are going to take J. Okay compare i is j if i is equal to j and take one more variable count which keeps track of the count of uh, an element i mean how many times an element is appearing so initially the count is only one now let us assume initially the count is one that four is appearing only one time now is four equal to two no if no then do j plus plus else do uh, count plus plus and and make j plus plus okay so i mean if these two elements are equal then increment the count otherwise just increment the value of j so one and four are not equal one and four and three are not equal three and four is not not equal 4 and 3 are not equal, 1 and 4 is not equal, 3 and 4 is not equal, 3 and 4 is not equal, 4 and 6 is not equal, 4 and 3 is not equal, 4 and 3 is not equal. Therefore, 4 is appearing only one time and then after the end of this loop, we are going to compare, compare count with n by 2. If count is, count is greater than n by 2, then we can say it is a majority element. Okay. Next time, increment the value of i. Okay, so how does that work? We are going to increment the value of i. Okay, so what we are going to do, make i point to this and j point to this. Now 2 and 1, they are not equal, so count is initially 1, so 2 and 1 are not equal, so increment the value of j. 2 and 3 are not equal, 2 and 3 are not equal, 2 and 3 are not equal, 2 and 1 is not equal, 2 and 3 is not equal, 3, 2 and 3 is not equal, 2 and 6 is not equal, 2 and 3 is not equal, 2 and 3 is not equal. Therefore, up to the end of this loop, the count is not incremented. Therefore, 2 is not a majority element. Now, again, perform exactly the same operation, just increment the value of i. So, next time, the value of i will point here and j will point here. So, initially, 1 is only one time. So, compare this 3 and 1 is not equal, 3 and 1 is not equal, 3 and 1 is not equal. Now, 1 and 1 is equal, so count is 2. That means 1 is appearing 2 times. Increment the value of j again not equal not equal not equal not equal not equal therefore one is appearing two times which is not greater than uh, 12 by 2 which is not greater than 6 therefore it is not a majority element okay now now next time increment the value of i so i will come here again initialize the value of count with one so compare i and j now this three and this three are equal so count will be 2. Increment the value of j. This 3 and this 3 are equal. So count will be 3. Increment the value of j. This 3 and 1 is not equal. Increment the value of j. 3 and 3 is equal. So count the value will be 4. Now again 3 and 3 is equal. So count will be 5. Again 6 and 3 is not equal. Increment j. 3 and 3 is equal. So count will be 6. Again increment the value of j. This 3 and this 3 is equal. Hence the count will be 7. So up to the end of this loop, again, if you are comparing the value of count with n by 2, you can see count is greater than n by 2. Hence, there exists 
there exists an majority element majority element which is 3 okay so for this particular array 3 is the majority element okay now this is the easiest method or even the most basic method to solve this problem but this method will take order of n square time it is take order of n square as a time complexity and what will the space complexity space complexity will be order of one as space complexity order one as a space complexity now the question is can you solve this problem which is taking any algorithm which is taking less than order of n square time if you can write on an algorithm which is taking less than order of n time that will be more efficient although as you know but the goal is to make it as efficient as by making as order of n can you solve this problem in order of n time solving the problem is easy i know you can do it i know i can do it everyone can do it right so solving the problem is easy but the question is not about solving the problem the question is can you solve this problem in more efficient manner okay now in the upcoming videos in the next video let us try to see one more approach one more approach to solve exactly the same problem okay let's see you in the next video